America's forests are vital to the way we all live, a way of life that requires a delicate balance between using our natural resources and conserving them for the future. The average person probably doesn't realize that the Forest Products Laboratory plays an important role in conservation in the United States. In order to conserve our nation's forests, you have to be able to afford to do the activities that are required on the land. Americans care about their nation's forests, and the Forest Products Laboratory provides options for managing our nation's forests and keeping them healthy. For 100 years, the Forest Products Laboratory has helped maintain this balance by working to discover the best ways to both use wood and improve the health of our forests. The Forest Products Laboratory, or FPL, was founded in 1910 as the National Center for Wood Research. At the time, forests were being cut at an alarming rate as railroads opened new territories for settlement. Laying and repairing railroad tracks took a heavy toll on the forests. The first task of FPL scientists was to develop preservatives to lengthen the service life of railroad ties. And thus began FPL's tradition of problem solving, of evolving research to meet the needs of the era, of working for the good of the people and the good of the land. During World War I, FPL researchers designed and developed stronger and lighter aircraft parts. Shipping crates were redesigned to provide better protection and use less space. Kiln drying of gun stocks helped maintain production when the supply of air dried wood was rapidly exhausted. The Second World War brought on an even greater demand for wood products. Nearly 700 employees worked around the clock at the lab. Aircraft, gliders, and fighting ships consumed millions of board feet of lumber. And FPL researchers developed early composite products as alternatives to solid wood. Boxes, crates, and paper cartons were in high demand. The lab answered with new container designs, packaging manuals, and training courses for thousands of military personnel. The first prefabricated house was built at the Forest Products Laboratory, and shortly thereafter, more than 300,000 prefabricated homes were needed to house war workers at production centers. In so many ways, wood was vital to the war effort. In the post-war years, FPL research continued to evolve with America's changing landscape and society's changing needs. FPL researchers developed a more efficient sawing model for lumber production. Today, most lumber in the U.S. and around the world is produced using this technology. It saves more than one billion board feet of lumber from going to waste each year. To meet construction needs, researchers contributed to the development of engineered wood products, such as glued laminated beams, eye joists, and trusses. These products serve the same purpose as the large, solid wood beams of the past, but are made with the smaller trees now available for harvest. Panel products, such as oriented strand board, were developed with the laboratory's help. These products offer strength and stability while putting undervalued materials to good use. Housing has long been a major focus of research at FPL. 90% of residential housing in the U.S. is built using wood-framed construction. The work of FPL scientists influenced many building codes and standards that keep homes safe, durable, and energy efficient. FPL's Research Demonstration House provides real-life conditions for housing studies on moisture and airflow. Composite siding and wood plastic shingles are just two examples of alternative building materials being demonstrated here. The adjacent carriage house demonstrates how forest thinnings can be used to produce heat and energy with the Biomax gasification unit. Thinning out dense, overstocked forests is vital to restoring their health. And millions of acres of forest lands in the United States are dangerously overgrown. Thinning comes with a steep price tag, but costs can be offset if the material removed is used for marketable products like composites, engineered wood products, and bio-based energy. This work also provides economic opportunities for small businesses and creates jobs for rural communities. 
using invasive tree species and wood products has similar environmental benefits. Signs made of juniper and siding made of salt cedar are just two examples of valuable products made from low-value wood. Recycling research at FPL encourages the reuse of waste materials. Work with the U.S. Postal Service resulted in the development of self-stick stamps that don't gum up recycling equipment. An additional 20 million tons of waste paper can be recycled each year thanks to this breakthrough. Paper making has been studied throughout the lab's history and researchers have found new ways to produce quality paper products while minimizing the environmental impacts of pulping and bleaching processes. Wood products are more a part of our daily lives than we often realize. FPL researchers make the safety of these products a priority. Engineers are continuously looking for ways to make wooden structures safer, from decks to timber bridges, even guardrails on the side of the road. Scientists also study how wood products perform in fires. Results of these tests are then applied to modern building codes. The wood-framed Hurricane House in Florida allowed researchers to measure the stresses on the building during Hurricanes Ivan, Dennis and Katrina. Results of this research will lead to safer design of wood structures. Researchers are also developing a wooden safe room to provide refuge from high winds. An air cannon blasts a 12-foot 2x4 100 miles per hour at the test walls to simulate the force of a hurricane or tornado. The Forest Products Laboratory is home to two unique collections. The herbarium at the Center for Forest Mycology Research contains about 70,000 specimens of wood decay fungi used to research and identify fungi from around the world. FPL also houses the world's largest research wood collection. More than 100,000 wood samples are used for research and identification, but sometimes our botanists are called upon for more unusual purposes. Researchers have used the collection to determine the origin of historical artifacts, assist with accident investigations, and even provide evidence for criminal cases. Perhaps the most famous instance of this work was the 1932 Lindbergh kidnapping case. FPL scientist Arthur Kaler studied the wooden ladder used in the crime and connected it to Bruno Hauptmann, who was subsequently convicted in 1935. Building on 100 years of research, we look to the future with a renewed dedication to conservation. FPL's new Centennial Research Facility allows us to continue as an international leader in forest products research. This 90,000 square foot facility houses state-of-the-art equipment and laboratories. It allows scientists to perform full-scale testing of wood frame buildings to bring improved technologies to the structures we use every day. Research on new environmentally friendly preservatives will protect wood in use and lengthen its service life. This manufacturing friendly space aids in the development of new composite products. Here researchers give new life to wood waste and recycled plastic by combining them to develop products like decking and siding. Wood fiber can be recycled into products such as three-dimensional engineered fiberboard and used in furniture, wall and floor panels, and packaging. Advancing composite technologies stretches our forest resources even further, getting the most out of materials that have until now been seen as waste. The Centennial Research Facility also houses a one-of-a-kind weathering chamber that can simulate temperature, humidity, sunlight, wind and rain to test the durability of wood products. As the need for sources of alternative energy increases, FPL researchers are finding new ways to make fuels, such as ethanol, from wood. Success in this area will reduce America's dependence on oil and help fight the effects of global warming. One of FPL's researchers discovered a key component to the biofuels process in a very unusual place, the belly of a beetle. Pichia stipitus is a yeast found in the gut of the beetle that helps it digest wood. This same yeast can efficiently ferment xylose, a primary component of wood, for ethanol production. 
Despite the monumental advances in wood products over the past century, trees still hold enormous undeveloped potential. Nanotechnology, the study of matter at the atomic and molecular level, is allowing FPL scientists to investigate wood in a more fundamental way than ever before. And it has the potential to revolutionize the forest products industry. Unlocking the secrets of how wood performs will open a whole new world of forest products to help us meet the challenges of the 21st century. In 50 or 100 years, the Forest Products Laboratory will still be playing an important role in improving the uses of wood for every American. As we have for the past century, the Forest Products Laboratory will continue to work toward a sustainable relationship between people and forests, ensuring that each take care of the other for generations to come. <laughs>